Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to share with you a tool that I use with my clients in order to help them reduce stress responses when they're dealing with toxic people. I'm using a model that I got from Paul Ekman and I highly recommend you check out his work, especially on the website, The Atlas of Emotions. Now, we talk often about situations where there's a conflict with a narcissist, we react a certain way and things sort of get out of hand. And quite often people don't know what to change, don't know where to start making changes. This model makes it easier to identify exactly what's happening and identify ways we can change. I'd like to share this with you. So using this model, we start with a precondition, which is how we are feeling when we start having an interaction. This is how we are feeling generally. And this can be, you know, a relatively positive precondition or can be a rather negative precondition if we're feeling down and stressed and upset. And this becomes quite, quite important further on. From the precondition, we move into the next step. The next step is having a trigger something that will generate a reaction. So something happens, the person says something, does something, doesn't do something, there's an external event, basically something comes to change the precondition. The trigger then generates a response and there can be different kinds of responses. Responses are largely in our body. Look for signs, for example, where you stop breathing, where you start having flushed cheeks, where you start feeling uh, adrenaline in your mouth, or you start feeling angry, or you your body is basically showing you that something is happening. You have to become aware of this because otherwise you lose control. And after you have the response, there typically is a reaction of either fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Quite often we look at situations where there would be a pacifier. So yes, just like the babies have, something that we do in order to try to reduce the danger or it could be some kind of amplifier. This is largely the case of someone is more willing to have a fight, have a disagreement, or jump into battle, as it were. So these typically are the two responses. Try to reduce the danger through pacifiers, or try to amplify the danger or the situation. Now, one of the first steps in making things better in our life is simply to increase our awareness. So you can take a recent situation where this happened and simply look, what was the trigger that occurred? What was the response in your body? Was this either an amplifier or was it a pacifier? And then you can look back and think, well, what was your precondition? And to what extent did either the amplifier change your precondition and make it worse? Or was your response a pacifier, in which case maybe it didn't change anything with the precondition or maybe actually it made things worse, maybe it made things better. But generally, these situations of tension do not really make things better. So let's imagine a situation where you have two people having a conversation and an unpleasant topic gets brought up. There's a precondition with certain levels of stress or certain levels of comfort. In a healthy relationship, it's relatively easy to talk about pretty much anything. However, there can still be some topics that are very uncomfortable. So bringing up this unpleasant topic is the trigger. When the trigger occurs, what is the response in each person's body? How are you responding and how do you see the other person responding? Remember, if you look for micro expressions on the face, you can pretty much see what they're feeling. If they are feeling anger, you'll see it. If they're feeling fear, you will see it. And if you see them smirking, that's a really bad sign because there possibly is some form of contempt. Also, if you are having an unpleasant response and you see that they don't care or they're making things worse or they're not picking up on it and maybe you're trying to communicate it, well, perhaps don't assume that they simply are oblivious, but maybe assume that they're doing it on purpose or they are okay with it. And if you also just express that you are not feeling very comfortable, are they doing something to increase your comfort or are they trying to decrease your comfort? Just observe. So let's imagine that you're quite often stuck in these situations. There's a trigger, there's a response, and either you switch to pacifier or amplifier. I'm assuming most of the time it's gonna be pacifier. Simply observe what your regular pacifier is. And once you know what your pacifier is, before you do it, just insert a pause and consider what would happen if you didn't do it. The pacifier might be trying to calm yourself down. The pacifier might be trying to calm the other person down. But for example, I know a person whose pacifier is often making a humoristic comment. 
making some kind of joke. That's a way to try to minimize the response that they are having, try to neutralize it because throw in a bit of humor so it can't be that bad. And what happens when this person sits with the response without using a pacifier? Well, it becomes very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. However, this lack of comfort is drawing this person's attention to the fact that there's something to work on. And instead of pacifying, so trying to push away the response, it's easier to sit with it. Breathe. And we always know we can insert the pacify afterwards if it's the right thing to do. If it's too uncomfortable, we can always move on. But if we can learn to simply sit a bit more with the discomfort, then it's much harder for the other person to manipulate us because we're no longer reacting the way we usually react. If we're willing to live with the discomfort of the response caused by the trigger, instead of panicking to try to remove all of the response, well, we're regaining some control on our life. So I suggest look for the pacifier that you typically use, look for the response and observe what it feels like. So the next time it happens, you can go, oh yes, I know what this is. Now I understand what I'm doing. And before I fall in to the pacifier, I've got the choice to pause it and see what I'm doing. And just for you, try to sit with the response, because if it's easier for you to sit with the response, it's easier for you to examine the trigger and decide if this really is something that you want and if it's really something that you are comfortable with. Until this is the case, you're more likely to have to the trigger to have an automatic response, which then leads possibly into pacifier and then feeds back into your pre-existing situation. What we want to do largely is break the automatic patterns so that you have choice. The more choice you have, the more likely it is that you can get your life on track and have the life that you want and that works for you rather than be on autopilot constantly. So let's take an example. Imagine you're going to dinner with your family and your partner's with you. And in the car, the partner starts a topic which is contentious, which is creating tension, which is stressing you out. That is the trigger. Your response to the trigger might be to feel scared, annoyed because they're picking the wrong moment. It's before you have dinner. You're trying to wind down. You're already stressed. So you're feeling all of this building up. You might express frustration towards the person and then it can become a fully blown fight. Or you can just try to pacify the person or pacify yourself. It can be doing some deep breathing. It can be uh, looking for compromise or just saying, listen, just please, can we talk about it later? In both cases, the person got control over you. Now, it's much easier if you see this pattern emerging before in the past to think there's a high probability that it's going to happen. If it happens, I've already predetermined my response and the response might be stop the car and say, I'm sorry, you're taking the bus back. Um, it, it doesn't work. Or it can simply be not inviting the person. If you know there's a risk that they will sabotage your moments, you have to be prepared. Maybe you don't want to, th to let them sabotage the moment. Or maybe you show up at the dinner and just go, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a bit tense because, you know, this person created a scene in the car again on the way here, which of course then means you're not taking side with them against the outside world, but you're just stating the facts and stating the obvious. Now, if you're prepared, it's significantly easier to avoid this occurring and easier to avoid getting derailed. So taking this example, you have the response, you can observe the trigger. And sometimes when you observe the trigger, it's easy to say, you're bringing up this topic before we're going to see my family for dinner. That's not cool. And that's it. Often, if we can label the situation and just call people out for what they're doing and just go, this is not cool, they're sort of stuck because they can't trigger the response anymore. And we see exactly what they're doing. This is one of the things that toxic people hate is to be seen for what they're doing. They like to manipulate, they like to play around with people. But if you call them out and going, I know exactly what you're doing and it's not cool, that can, well, that can possibly trigger them, make them very angry. It can also just make them completely shut up. And I've seen this time and time again, where I've said, I see exactly what you're doing. You're doing X, Y, Z, and it's not cool. And they're completely, completely at a loss for words. Of course, before you do anything like this, always check on the situation, always check on the risk, make sure you stay safe. Don't put yourself in harm's way. 
I hope you found this helpful and do share in the comments situations where you've done something like this or some things you've observed in terms of the trigger or the response or the pacifier versus amplifier reaction and uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.